2018 is the 100th anniversary of votes for women in the UK. We covered Victoria Lydiard, who was the last surviving suffragette when she died in Hove in 1992 in Series 1. Click on the box up there to watch that episode. This episode is all about other pioneering women from off of the history of Brighton and Hove. Roll titles! We begin with Louisa Martindale and also Louisa Martindale. The first of these was born in Essex in 1839. After her husband died, she and her young daughters lived in various countries before moving to Lancaster Road, Brighton, so the kids could attend a local high school for girls. Here she set up various political organisations and was the co-founder of Lewis Road Dispensary for Women and Children. Located at 145 Isling Road Road, later moving to 101 Roundhill Crescent, then 8 Ditching Road, then Windlesham House on Windlesham Road, this was founded in 1899 as one of the few medical centres staffed entirely by women. It offered cheap healthcare to those who couldn't afford Victorian doctor's fees. Louisa's daughter Louisa would go on to be its senior surgeon and a pioneer of gynaecological treatment. Mama Martindale also ran a help centre for female shop workers, one of whom was the 14-year-old Margaret Bonfield, who worked at Mrs White's, a woman's clothes shop, at 14 Church Road, and later W. Heverington's at 83 Western Road, Brighton. Louisa educated the hell out of young Margaret, lending her umpteen books and fostering an interest in politics in the teenager. Bonfield would later move away from Brighton, becoming an MP, and in 1929, Britain's first ever female cabinet minister. Speaking of education, say hello to the Lawrence sisters. They were part of a large family living in Wimbledon. With 13 children and financial problems, Daddy Lawrence couldn't afford to send one of his daughters, Millicent, to Cambridge University. Oh no! One of Millie's older sisters, Penelope, came up with enough money for her to do a one-year teacher training course. This gave Millie, Penny, another sister Dorothy, and Mother Charlotte an idea. Millie, Penny, Dottie and Lottie would set up a girls' school in Brighton. They started out in 1885 with just 10 pupils, including two younger sisters. Initially based at 25 Lewis Crescent, they later expanded into 26 Lewis Crescent, 3 Arundel Terrace, 37 Chesham Road, and 35, 36 and 37 Sussex Square, plus 34, and later 29. All eight Lawrence sisters would go on to teach at the school, with a focus on physical as well as mental education, a rarity for girls. Wimbledon House School thrived. In 1898 it moved to a cliff top just outside Brighton and changed its name to that of the local village. Today it is the most famous girls school in the world. Rodine. Helena Normanton was born in East London in 1882. Aged four, her piano maker father died in strange circumstances. His bag found untouched in an empty carriage at Edgeway Road Station, his body discovered with an unexplained broken neck in a nearby tunnel. Soon after, Helena moved with her mother and sister to Brighton. She went on to become a university lecturer and journalist. In 1915, she published a booklet calling for equal pay for women, which was pretty radical considering they didn't even have the vote yet. As a child, she set her heart on becoming a barrister. Now well into her 30s, she was no closer to realising that dream. Why? Because women weren't allowed to attend the Inns of Court therefore couldn't possibly qualify for the bar. Not that sort of bar. Rejected applications in hand, Helena took her case to the House of Lords. A change to sex discrimination law saw the barrier lifted, and in 1922, at the age of 39, Normanton became the first British woman to practice as a barrister. Two years later, she got married and insisted on keeping her maiden name for professional reasons, which was totally unheard of back then. She would thus become the first married woman in history to successfully demand and receive a UK passport in their maiden name. She went on to achieve multiple other legal firsts, including being the first woman to serve as a King's Counsel and the first to conduct a trial in America, where in 1925, she won the right for married women like across the USA to also keep their maiden names. <laughs> Proud of her Brighton education, Normanton was one of the loudest voices calling for a university to be established in the town. In 1956, an appeal was launched to raise funds to create the University of Sussex. Think of it as the 50s equivalent of a Kickstarter campaign. And the first donation received was from Helena. She made several more as well as bequeathing her assets upon her death the following year, thus making a huge contribution to the eventual opening of Sussex Uni in 1961. Helena Normanton died in October 1957 and her ashes are buried in the churchyard of St Wolfram's in Ovingdean. Helena lived at 16 Cheltenham Place, 4 Clifton Place and 11 Hampton Place. So that's loads of places, none of which, shamefully, has a blue plaque. Boo! And those are just a few of Brighton and Hove's pioneering women's from off of history. Thanks, ladies. Raise a glass to fact me up. Next week we look at the breweries of Brighton and Hove past and present. <laughs>